Hi guys, welcome back. I am back here today with my first design team project for Dyes R Us. Today we'll be mass producing some mini slimline cards using the Aloha Stampin' Die Set from Lawn Fawn. Hello and welcome to Debbie J's Crafting Corner. I'm Debbie and each week I show you how you can create awesome cards and other crafty projects. Because if I can make it, you can too. So if you'd like to see more tutorials and inspirational videos, be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the little bell to be notified every time I upload a new video. This is the Aloha stamp set got this little pineapple, a couple of little faces. and What's funny is I've had these in my stash <laughs> pretty much forever. You guys know how I am with my crafting. I, a while back, bought a ton of different things, including these little tiny sets from Lawn Fawn. They were a great price point and I thought that they were just super cute and they still are a really good value but I never did get around to using them because my creative brain just didn't wrap around it. So I decided to challenge myself today and go ahead and create a not a standard size card, not a slim si line card. This is actually a mini slim line and fits in a standard envelope. These are the number six envelopes that we used to, when people wrote letters, we used to write letters and such, and these are the envelopes that we normally sent those out in. So I went ahead and just was playing around earlier today and made this super cute little pineapple card. And I'm gonna show you how you can create the same card and basically mass produce this to send off to all of your uh, friends that are in such a mood for the summertime. Now since these envelopes are different than what we typically use, my standard is an A2 size card, so the envelopes I use are that size, and the cards are four and a quarter by five and a half. This envelope is a number six business envelope. It's about three and five eighths inches by six and a half. So an A2 card will not fit in this. So we're gonna make a different size card base to fit inside this envelope. And we're gonna be using just a basic piece of heavyweight white card stock. So the cardstock that you're gonna need is going to be six and a half by six and a quarter inches, and then you're gonna have some extra pieces. This small piece here is gonna be perfect for doing smaller images and or sentiments, so don't throw that away. And this one, I would say, so this one is actually five inches by eight and a half, you could make an almost square card with this, so don't throw away those traps. You'll be able to use them for now other to things. To make our later. card bases, we're going to need to score these pieces. So I've put the piece of cardstock in my scoreboard, so it has the six and a half inch side here, and then we're going to score it at the middle, which is at three and a quarter. And I'm going to be making a bunch of these, so I'm going to go ahead and make all of those card bases right now. So now I've got a bunch of those little card bases ready to go. Next I'm going to do some stamping. And remember the scraps I was talking about? This scrap is right about two inches and it is uh, six and a quarter long. So it's a little longer than I need, but it's just about the right size to do all of my stamping. So I'm going to be using these. For the focal image, this one measures, this one measures right about five and a quarter. So I'm gonna go ahead and trim some of these down to that size. So I'll just get out my Fiskars paper trimmer for that. And we'll trim that down. I'll trim the first one down and then just test it to make sure it's the right size. So that's five and a quarter. And that is perfect for my focal So for image. my stamping today, I am going to, I actually raided my um, ink stash and pulled out one that I have not used in a couple of years. This is from Colorbox and I don't know that the company is still around. If I can find where you can get something similar, I will leave that information down below, below or over on my blog, but I don't think you can get this. You may be able to get something else with the multiple colors though, and that's what I'm going to be doing for, with this today. You could also use multiple ink pads and put the ink on your stamp that way. This turned out to be really quick for me though. So I'm just going to ink that up, ink up the green, let me move this over, ink up the green, 
and you can see it is coming down a little bit onto the pineapple itself but that is okay and then I'll come back in and gently touch it up with the you've got the yellow and the orange and a little bit of the red touching down there too then I'm gonna just go ahead and stamp that down And this is a pigment ink and it came out just perfect. Then I'm going to move my, the pineapple is about an inch wide and I wanna have a little bit of a gap in between each piece. So I'm gonna move it over five grid lines. So one, two, three, four, five. So I'm gonna move it over to there. Line it back up with that bottom grid line, which means having some kind of a grid in your in your stamp platform would be a perfect thing to do. Um, I do know that the Misty comes with it and I created this one for my um, Tim Holtz platform and added a little bit of, of stencil spray to the top so that it doesn't, so it's nice and sticky. So I'll stamp down my second. So next I'm going Perfect. to add a cute little face to each of those little pineapples. And to do that, I am just going to use my uh, Fisker stamp press. And you could use a, an acrylic block for this, but I figured this would be really, really quick and easy to do. I'm also gonna be adding some little cheeks to them. So I'll put the stamp down in a different spot so I can do that one. And I can get all of those knocked out. So let me get my first panel. For the cheeks, I'm going to be using Catherine Pooler's It's a Girl. And then for the eyes and mouth, I'm going to use some Tuxedo Black ink. And I probably should not have inked both of them at the same time, but that's probably just going to get some extra ink down on my desktop. I'm just going to line up that cute little face on my pineapple and try not to shift the panel around. And then just press it down and now it's got a cute little face. And if there is still enough ink on there from the, from the pink from Catherine Pullers, you can just put that right beside the little mouth, press down, and now we've got a cute little pineapple with his face. For the Aloha sentiment, I decided I'm going to switch back over to my Tim Holtz platform so I can get the Aloha in the same spot on all of the cards. And it's going to be just kind of overlapping a little bit of the tops of a couple of the little pineapples off to the left hand side. So just pick that up with my platform and then I'll just stamp that down um, with my Memento Tuxedo Black ink. and then stamping it down with that aloha. Now looking back at my sample card, I realized there's a couple of things I have not stamped out yet. First of all, there is the little sunglasses that I decided to put on one of the pineapples on the front. And then on the inside, I have an extra pineapple that I cut out using the coordinating die. So that means I need a bunch more little pineapples and a bunch of little sunglasses. And that is one of the good things about having those extra scraps. I can go ahead and stamp these out using the same inks that I used before and um, getting these done so I can go ahead and start die cutting. Now that I have all the pineapples all basically stamped out, I'm gonna go ahead and add that little face on there too. Just is so adorable. Now that I've got all of those stamped out, I'm gonna go ahead and just line up my die, to my coordinating die that goes with the pineapple and I'm going to hold it down with a piece of post-it tape. So now I'm going to also get out my cutting plates. So I'm going to use the basic sandwich that I've been using ever since I got this magic mat and re-evaluated the thicknesses of all of my shims. So I'm using with a magic mat, you're supposed to use it in place of one of your cutting mats. I'm using a Gemini Junior. This is my Gemini Junior plate. This is actually my oldest plate that was extremely warped. And I heated it in the oven and I think I got a little bit too hot because right now it is starting to warp a little bit and part of the 
part of the glass basically turned white. That means you got your oven too hot. So I will be experimenting more on some other plates when they get older, but this is what I'm using right now. So in place of one of my cutting mats, I'm using my magic mat. In place of all of the shims, I realized that it's about the same thickness as a Sizzix plate. So this reduces the number of things I've got to remember to put in my Gemini Junior, and it has been working great. So first I've got my flat Sizzix plate, and I've got my flat magic mat. Now I can put my couple of dies that are now tacked in place with that post-it tape, put my flat um, Gemini Junior plate on top, and run that through my Gemini Junior. Now the reason I keep saying the word flat <laughs> is that I have had so many dies warp because my plates were warped. So I am so excited that now I have a way of doing it where it's not messing up my dies. So now I'm gonna go ahead and pop this little guy out. And now what I can do with the little sunglasses is I can adhere those over the eyes of one of my little pineapples on the front of one of the cards. So now I've got all these cute little pineapples ready to go too. Now the only thing that we're missing is the matting layer. So for that, I took a piece of scrapbook paper. You know I have a ton that I don't use. I took a 12 by 12 piece of scrapbook paper and cut it down. So now I've got enough to make eight cards. Now each of these little panels measure five and three quarters by two and three quarters. So that's going to give us a nice little matting layer to go around it. So next step, we're gonna adhere these little um, stamped panels down to our matting layer. So to adhere it down, I'm just gonna take one of my panels and one of my matting layers, and I'm using a dot liner adhesive and just adding that to the back. And then I'm going to center that best I can on the front of this panel. Now, you know me, I normally get things a little bit crooked, but that's okay. That just shows it's handmade, and more practice means I'll get better at it. And I really like the way that that little, um, these sunglasses looked on the one little pineapple. So I'm going to go ahead and add the pineapple, the sunglasses to the pineapple on this card, too. I just added a little bit of art glitter glue to the back and I'm using my reverse tweezers so that I can make sure to get perfect placement on there and that is just adorable. Now I'm going to add our little panels onto the front of those card bases that we made and to do that I'm going to use some scrapbook.com foam tape. So this is gonna add just a little bit of dimension and it's gonna make those images just pop also a little bit I also don't want more. any saggy middle, so I went ahead and made sure to cover the inside as well. So now, you're not gonna be able to press on the outside and have your card front kind of cave in. So that's gonna be a lot nicer for the recipient too. Okay, so I'm gonna take one of my card bases and line this up so that it's got that nice, about a quarter inch space around. This one just about in the center and straight. And turned out perfect. We'll go ahead and put together the rest of these cards. Next, we're gonna add that little extra pineapple to the inside of each of these cards. And to do that, I'm just gonna use my dot liner adhesive. That will hold it just perfectly fine. I'm just gonna make sure I've added all over the back of that pineapple and then add him in there. Now you could stamp another sentiment in here or just write a quick note to um, your recipient. And these cards are just so darn cute. And since the envelope, these are, like I said, just the plain envelopes you get at the office supply store that we've been using for years, I'm gonna dress it up just a touch and add the little pineapple and the aloha to the flap of each of the envelopes. And I'm doing it the same way I did the other, just adding some of that rainbow color to my pineapple and stamping that down. And since we are doing the mass producing thing, I'm gonna go ahead and stamp out quite a few more of those envelopes. And I'm just gonna stamp that aloha over the little pineapple and that just looks so adorable for the outside of the card. 
So that is going to finish up my little project for today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Be sure to check out all of the other projects on the design team because I know the other creators will have a lot of inspirational ideas for you to enjoy. Here are a couple more videos that I know you <laughs> here are a couple more videos that I know you'll like. Have a wonderful day and remember if I can make it, you can too.